Hello. Welcome to On Another Note, episode 11. I'm on your host, and she's back in action. She was down bad last week. I was supposed to put up an episode weekly. That's like my target for this podcast, but I got a cold. So instead of being all coffee and nasally, I was like, all right, all right. I'm going to give myself a little bit of time to heal and recover because in my opinion, I think that I was quantum leaping. (laughs) You're like, oh, this bitch. Yeah, well, that's just the truth, okay? Because I've been experiencing, you know, little bits of leveling up. And I heard from another podcast. It's called Aware and Aggravated by Leo Skeppy. If you're into just you know, becoming a better version of yourself into, you know, this fucking like incredible human being and you want to hear the hard truth, he'll give it to you. (laughs) In one of his episodes, he was talking about like when your body gets sick, your body is actually like trying to catch up with your spirit because it's in another place. So it has to like break down and then repair itself so that it can match up with like, you know, that frequency. You're like, bitch, what the fuck are you talking about? I know, I know, but that's just what I stand by, okay? Like, I was quantum leaping. (laughs) A little busy doing that, but she's back. She's back. It's episode 11, and today I wanted to talk about just, you know, one of my favorite topics, health and wellness, because I've been all about it. I love promoting it, okay? That's just my thing. (laughs) I want to approach it with a perspective of just like seeing with my own two eyes what the fuck's been going on in the healthcare system and just healthcare trends in general that just kind of don't make sense to me. I want to take the time to suggest certain mindsets, you know, to approach wellness, fitness, health in a way that can encourage somebody, you, a listener maybe, to really, you know, prioritize it. And I've just reaped the benefits of living a healthier lifestyle and I want that for fucking society as a whole. So here I am and yeah, let's dive into it. I mentioned before that I used to work in healthcare. Oh, also, um, if you're like considering on making health changes and want like accurate information, please consult with a professional. Like I'm just here voicing my thoughts and stuff that I've seen, my opinion. And I'm not a medical expert whatsoever. So if you're, you know, wanting to make that change, definitely talk with somebody who knows what the fuck is up. (laughs) It ain't me, but I'm just here to spark some inspiration. Like, that's my hope, you know? So, yeah. um, Something that I noticed working in healthcare for, like, what, three years was the patient to nurse and doctor ratio like that was something I was like whoa um how is this sustainable it just fucking didn't make sense to me like I love nurses I love healthcare professionals and it kind of broke my heart to be honest seeing these people just work their ass off like constantly because they're kind of like forced into that situation they were seeing a lot of patients and the ratio was like 20, even 30 patients to one nurse for a run at the facility one time. And I'm like, this is nuts. So I kind of started off thinking about that. And then I was like, there's, there's got to be solutions, right? So one solution to this particular issue would be have more staff, have more medical workers. And I'm like, all right, I get that. But then that that's where it gets a little bit muddy because business gets involved. You know, like, are, do you have the resources to be hiring more medical staff? I don't know. It gets way too complicated. And then I was like, there's a better solution, in my opinion, and that's to reduce the amount of patients. Like, I'm bringing up being a patient because... When you neglect your health, you are increasing your chances of showing up at the doors of doctors and nurses. 
and how that like is intertwined in my opinion is that like you know seeing these healthcare people overworked because of the load that they have to deal with I think that you having the responsibility of just you know preventing that likelihood of being a patient plays a really huge role in making what's already a a stretched out healthcare system a better one yeah like if you're just in a place where you're like I want to do better I think it's really important because it's not just for you I just want to put it out there that you're really helping the world you're helping ease the workload of medical workers who really do try their best to heal people and provide the best treatment and care and it really trickles into like the rest of society like it's it's really big and impactful so if you want to take the time to just like really analyze how you can go about it I think it's like super fucking dope honestly you know if you are kind of like going through changes I would say and you want to incorporate a healthier lifestyle, you've noticed that like you've been involved in habits that aren't healthy and you're not satisfied with where you are in life, then I think that the mindset that I'm introducing in this episode could be beneficial to you. And so one way to look at it is, yeah, like how about we try our best not to show up at a doctor's door? That can be like a starting mindset. So you're like, okay, like, how do I not become a patient? I think that's a really good start. And then the next one would be like, what are some habits that I'm partaking in that honestly, like, would raise the chances of me, like, seeking medical help? Because when I was working in healthcare, there were patients who were dealt shitty cards. They have medical conditions that were, like, purely chance- and genetics and they're just trying their best to like fucking work through that but what I saw as well were people who neglected themselves for so long and it just honestly it just added up to the point where they're like I need help because my body's not working the way that it's supposed to and that was kind of like a tough pill to swallow really so that's why I'm here like you know ask yourself like do you want to become a patient? If the answer is like, I don't give a fuck, do you, boo? You know, like, all right. <laughs> but if the answer is no, I, I don't want to become a patient, the next question is to ask yourself, like, are there any things that you're partaking in that would increase your likelihood of seeing a doctor? For me, it was definitely my diet. Like, I, I can only speak on personal experience, but my diet was, like, shit awful for a good amount of time. It was obvious because I was overweight for a number of years not too long ago. And now, like, you know, if you're seeing this on video, you can see my gains. <laughs> oh, my gosh, stop. Bitch, stop. Stop. <laughs> Okay, so you're just like, all right, how about we start with diet and exercise? I was like working in healthcare and I was like, I don't want to be one of those people who has fucked myself over for way too long. Like, I already started doing that. So what's one way that I can just be like better about it? And that's to begin lifting weights. That's my avenue that I chose. You know, if, you, if you're into different things, it doesn't have to be lifting weights, although I really encourage it. Because when you're lifting weights, especially from a weight loss perspective, you are burning a lot of calories like when your muscles are repairing themselves. So it's not just like cardio where you only burn a specific amount of calories while you're running or just like, you know, walking, whatever, like anything cardio related. When you're lifting weights, you're actually burning off whatever you're working out at the moment and then as your body repairs itself too. So that's why I promote it. That's, you know, that that's just my preferred method. There's other things like yoga or any physical activity in general that like you love. That, that's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> what I see a lot is 
yeah, exercise, but it's so hard to like start. It's so hard to like know where to start. You know what I'm saying? Like when you don't exercise, you increase the chances of having high blood pressure, right? And uh, this is just some basic research that I did on the search engine. And I'm like, well, I don't really understand high blood pressure. So high blood pressure is when your heart is pumping blood, like working extra hard to pump blood and circulate blood throughout the rest of your body. So knowing that, I was just like, I don't want my heart to fucking work harder than it has to. Like it, it can only work for so long just because life is finite. It's only gonna like decrease in strength the older that we get because your heart's been pumping for so fucking long. You know, like that's the math. And I was like, you know, I am very grateful for having no medical conditions to get in the way of my heart doing its fucking thing. That's kind of where my exercise mindset started was from a place of gratitude. I'm just like, dude, it's so fucking dope that my heart just like works and I don't have to fucking think about it. My autonomic nervous system is chef's kiss doing its fucking thing. And I approach exercise like I want to be able to like give back to my heart. I want to give back to the heart gods and give them thanks for just the ability to pump blood and give me life. You know, like that's just kind of what worked for me. Again, like I, I'm just I'm not trying to work out to look a certain way although like you know when you work out it does help you gain confidence but when you approach it with the mindset of gratitude I think that it's more motivating in a way than co like confidence will come with it but you're just trying to give back to your body like no I don't want high blood pressure so let me exercise so my heart doesn't have to fucking work twice as hard and I think there's a lot of beauty in that so maybe that's kind of like an approach that could like, you know, spark some motivation in you. It's like, let me give back to my body for the allowance of just it giving me life in the first place. Like, uh, I hope that makes sense. Keep thinking about what physical activity that you like, that you can start, start small and go from there. But why are you doing it? you know you doing it to give thanks back to yourself to honestly like show yourself some respect some love for the ability to just live is fucking amazing and yeah like you know exercise and self-love they're they're correlated in that way i'm just saying so what's like another bad habit that i wanted to kick lack of physical activity handled another habit like I mentioned before, was just not giving a fuck about what I ate. That's a big thing too that affects your, clearly like your body, but it also affects your mental health. It affected my mental health because I ate whatever the fuck I wanted, but I wasn't satisfied with the way that I felt. I felt shitty for eating shitty foods. Like I had no energy and shit like that. Like fuck that, you know? So I wanted to fix my relationship with food. And in the United States, it's top tier because the accessibility to food is like fucking everywhere. Like that's fucking awesome, right? But it also has a downside in itself because you're faced with like choices every day. Like we don't live in a world where it's like hunter gatherer and you're fighting for your life anymore. You're exposed to more addictive foods and they're processed as fuck, right? But they're kind of like designed to target your cravings. Like they want you to fucking crave that shit. And that's like a struggle in itself. Self-control is so much easier said than done. And we live in a world where like candy and fucking soda advertisements are just like being rubbed in our face and like fucking every media that we consume. Like it's tough out here okay like I, I do I do get that there's hella factors like trying to just manipulate us and so when it comes to diet you know I think the kiss method is awesome to go about it you're like what the fuck is kiss 
is <laughs> now kiss <laughs> kisses keep it simple stupid how you can approach a healthier diet could be like paying attention to the amount of salt you're eating so i looked it up i was like how much salt are americans eating question mark <laughs> Americans are eating around 3,400 milligrams of salt on average daily, and the recommended amount is 2,300. So, yeah, that's that's significantly more, and that's the fucking average. There's people who are eating way more. Like, it blows my mind. But you know, keeping it simple, keeping it simple. How much salt are you eating? And the second question that I looked up was, what happens when you eat too much salt? Like, what's the consequence of a high sodium diet. Lo and behold, heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure. And so taking that into consideration, I'm just like, dude, that can fuck my body up. <laughs> and again, like ask yourself, do you care? Like, do you care about the consequences? If you don't give a fuck, then hey, do you boo? Do you? If you do care about the consequences, how can we approach that? You know, like, we can just eat less salt. We can just be a little bit more conscious about what we're putting into our bodies. Choosing the option that has less salt is another form of self-love in my opinion. Just because you're giving your body something that's easier to digest compared to the option with more salt. You're saying to your gut, like, hey, I respect you. I think that it's incredible that you are able to break all the food down that I eat to give me energy to live. And so the mindset is like, I want to be able to give back to my gut health for all that it does. Like it's so incredible that we have insulin just floating around in our body. Insulin helps turn our food into fucking energy. So a way to approach this is just like, I don't want to make it work harder than it has to. I don't want my insulin to spike that much. Just in respect for its ability to do its thing and give me life. So that's why I'm choosing this option. It, it runs deep. Again, it can just be as simple as picking the option with less salt. Like it, it doesn't have to be that complicated. And the thing to really consider is consistency. Like, you know, if you're blessed to live in a country that gives you the option of breakfast, lunch, and dinner, like each time that you make the decision for your meal, there's a lot of weight that can be carried into that decision. So. It goes to self-love, it goes to self-care. When you're respecting yourself and your body's natural ability to convert food into energy and be like, hey, thanks for doing what you do. So I don't want to make you work hella hard by shoving down a bunch of nonsense that's going to put you to work and tire you out. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, these decisions are really additive. Like going back to healthcare workers, when you start to take care of yourself, you're decreasing your chance of showing up at a doctor's door. There are a lot of people who have to deal with medical conditions because of their genetics. It's heartbreaking when like people have to fucking deal with that. And if you have sympathy for those suffering and they had no control over it, then you can really make a big difference by staying away from the fucking doctor and able to give that doctor the opportunity to help people who really need it. Again, what I saw were a lot of people who just like neglected themselves and end up having to see a fucking doctor because they're all of a sudden in, in a position where their body is failing. I think of it as like, they're kind of taking away from people who actually need it, you know? So when you make these changes to your diet and exercise, understand that there's a lot of self-love that comes from it because you're respecting yourself and overall you're really helping out nurses and doctors because you're taking away from their workload and they're able to give their time and energy to those who are suffering and they had no choice you know what i'm saying you know when you take care of yourself not only are you gonna reap the benefits of having a healthier mind and a healthier body but you're really adding to the collective spirit of making the world a better place. 
And it's a win-win situation because there's gratification in the fact that like you did this all by yourself and being proud of yourself is such an underrated form of self-love. Like it's incredible that you consistently make these decisions to make the world a fucking better place. And that's fucking amazing. I didn't expect for healthcare to boil down to self-love, but I'm glad that it fucking did. Like that shit's dope. I feel like a lot of people who preach about diet and exercise, like don't put it in a perspective of mindset when it comes to like self-love, you know, like kind of summing it all up again. When you choose to exercise, think of it in a way where it's giving back to your body's natural ability to pump blood, you know? Why make your heart work harder than it has to? When you're consuming a lot of salty foods, you're making your digestive system work harder than it has to. So why not like pick a better option and able to give back to it and be like, hey, I don't want you to be pushing yourself like that. How about you take a break? I think that if you're trying to, you know, start this health journey, it could be helpful if you approach it that way. Just all you're doing is just practicing self-love and saying, hey, like, thanks, body. You're the fucking shit and I fuck with you. (laughs) But yeah, your decision to take care of yourself really is making all the difference from an individual level all the way up to the wellness of society. All right, friends, that's all I got for you. If you're listening to this on a podcast platform, give your homegirl a five stars rating. That would be awesome. I mean, like, if you're not really feeling it, just don't do it at all, I guess. It's better than giving me a one star. Uh. (laughs) And if you're listening to this, watching this on YouTube, Um, Let me know what you think and um, any thoughts are always welcome. And please subscribe if this podcast made you put your hands on your knees and throw that ass back, you know. Also, give it a like. I think that giving this podcast a like would help your soulmate hit you up. I'm just saying. Okay, same time next week. All right, cool. I'll see you then. Bye.